So, opened up, this is what, um, what it looks like on the inside. You can see that um, down here is the pivot hole for the contrite wheel and you know the, the fusee, the center wheel, the third wheel, and of course the contrite wheel is the fourth wheel. And um, spent about oh half hour, forty five minutes on the couch with the calculator and scratch paper and did some calculations <clears throat> between um, well with the with the gear count here the gear and pinion count between those two and this uh, this the uh, I think this is called the crown wheel um, the escape wheel and tried to figure out um, what were the possibilities when it comes to uh, how many teeth the gears are supposed to have and such and um, unlike making a, a gear that uh, is broken uh, we are uh, you know if you have a broken gear you you can at least know how many teeth uh, you have to replicate and the the size the diameter and all that is given to you by the broken gear. Well, in, in this situation they're completely missing so we have to do some guesswork, some um, educating guessing and um, that's what I've done as well as some measurement work. Um, so that's that's what we're gonna have to do and that that means um, in guessing uh, we may make a mistake and we'll have to make it twice and so be it. If you don't have the patience for that, um, you shouldn't be doing this sort of work. Um, something I wanted to point out to you and I'm going to zoom up, zoom in here and show you. It's, it's really rather interesting to, um, to observe the craftsmanship of um, of these these uh, individuals that uh, from years gone by, it's actually very interesting um, how rather crude they are. I don't know how well you can zoom in on the screen you're looking at, but like the the shape of the pinion, we want to observe the shape of the pinion and. Um, it's actually rather coarse and you look down here um, in the corners of the the spokes and stuff this is all hand filed now they very likely used a machine to help cut the teeth but even that I'm guessing that the, the pinions were cut with two cuts as opposed to a single cut um, one probably with just a slitting saw to cut the notch and then another saw used uh, or um, cutter used to cut the profile, the, t the tips of the, the teeth. It's an interesting, it's an interesting and, and very rough by, uh, by our standards that we use today. And, and amazingly, you know, the, the piece works. And so it's just rather interesting to see the, the finish work. And, um, you know, all this was hand filed back in the day. But, um, I took note of of the 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 types of teeth that we have here um, in gearing in in watch repair uh, there's basically uh, we use uh, cycloidal gearing as opposed to involute gearing and so that's pretty universal across horology but um, one of the things that you'll note is that the, what we call the root of the tooth down at the in the bottom of the channel sometimes they'll be like a square uh, sharp cornered root or and sometimes they'll be rounded and I note that um, that in both the pinions and the wheels it is the the cornered root and so in making the new piece uh, we want it to match even though from a technical perspective uh, a rounded root would be stronger 
we want to make it as close to matching as possible. So um, I did some uh, very rude measuring here um, from the pivot to what I what is uh, the the pitch circle uh, of the wheel, and I'm making the guess that um, the pinion that we need to make for this to fit there is going to be about three millimeters in diameter and I had some three millimeter um, oil hardened steel SAE01 oil hardened steel and I've already made off camera um, a pinion blank that um, we'll use. I've already got that bottom pivot um, cut and it'll fit in there and fit fit in the pivot hole and this is this is just a blank uh, we're going to, to cut the leaves of the pinion and make sure that it fits and works before we do any other finishing work on it um, I'm making the educated guess that um, based on the gear count and and all that that the the pinion we need to cut is a seven leaf pinion this is an eight leaf pinion here um, the escape wheel um, over here the escape wheel has a six leaf pinion and so um, I just thought that um, it's it's either going to be a six seven or eight and I think eight is going to be too many too many uh, leaves in a pinion to fit in this small space six may work actually they all may work but we're gonna start with seven and hope that that's a, a good educated guess uh, get that m made and meshed properly with um, the third wheel and um, we'll take it we'll take it on and uh, then worry about making the the gear that uh, interacts with the escape wheel then um, I do have some uh, cutters that may work. Uh, I'm going to sort through them and see if I can't find something close. And we will, um, I'll, I'll use that if I have one that's close. And if it isn't quite perfect, um, then I can always go back and uh, make a second cut uh, with... Uh, with a cutter that would uh, more match the the profile that we're looking for uh, the very worst that could happen and, and it's not really worse but uh, worst case scenario is I don't have anything that matches and I actually have to make the cutter um, for the pinion so I actually have to make the tool to make the part so hopefully we won't, we'll have, we won't have to do that and uh, we can just go with what we have. We'll see.
Okay. Well, I just showed you the, the cutting of the seven leaf pinion and I don't know if I get the just to focus on it very well, but here it is. Let's see if I can zoom in on it and have it be in focus hopefully. Um Anyway, there we go. Hopefully that'll... There we go. Um, so, uh, there's a couple things wrong with this. Um, so I had to cut it a second time. Well, first of all, you'll note that the, the roots of the... The roots of the, of the teeth, the very deep it gets very narrow, it causes the actual tooth of the pinion to be very narrow at the root and that makes it very fragile and so the cutter that I used uh, is not, it's too long not a good match for this. Um, the second thing that's wrong that, that you aren't going to be able to observe is that um, that when I put this in, even, even though it, it I'm going to have to scrap this. Um, I, I, I was able to put it in and test it out and the gearing didn't quite match up um, the seven uh, tooth pinion number and so what I ended up doing is the second time uh, I made this I made it a six tooth pinion and um, And then I, I, I didn't engage the cutter nearly as deeply as I did on this one. I'll bring the, the six tooth. Um, trying to do this in front of a camera. It's a little bit different than... There we go. And uh, you'll notice that I didn't engage it nearly as deep. And, and then the uh, I did, as I mentioned, uh, was likely done in the uh, the original uh, mechanism earlier uh, is that I ended up having to to cut the six tooth uh, pinion the second one uh, with uh, actually three three separate cuts one cut um, engaged um, just the slot itself and then then another cut to um, with a different cutter to shape the uh, two different cuts to shape the profile which the profile the the end of the tooth is a lot more rounded where this is more spear shaped and um, so the the, the the profile of the tooth is a lot fuller and a lot more bulb like as opposed to spear tip like um, and I have um, Put this one in the mechanism as well. Tested it in the mechanism, and it and it meshes beautifully. It meshes beautifully, a lot smoother than the seventh tooth pinion. And so then I went ahead and proceeded off camera, and um, did some. Uh, certainly, by no means uh, final finishing, but I, I cleaned it up quite a bit. So it, it would have originally looked like this coming from a three millimeter stock and then I cut it down to uh, make it look more like a pinion and arbor should look and um, and then I was able to put it, put the whole thing in the mechanism close close the two plates up together with it in there and it um, it spins beautifully in the mechanism now that doesn't mean that it's going to work as a as a final product. I have learned in making gears that um, when it spins free, um, that's one thing. But when you put it under load, under working load, sometimes that will cause the gearing to bind up, and that's where. It, um, so it it, it looks good. Uh, I'm very hopeful that it'll work in the situation, but. Um, 
we're not 100% there until until we get everything buttoned up and it under load and see if the, the, it works under that situation. So, so at this point, I have not heat treated it. I have not done anything except um, take off the excess metal. I still need to heat treat it. Still need to polish the pinion. If I could give you a good close up picture of um, the pinion, you would see that it's still very very rough. Um, so still very unfinished. But we're gonna call this um, progressed enough that we can um, continue on to the uh, to the wheel portion of this assembly. And I, I, I was calling it the contrite wheel and it's actually the contrate wheel. Instead of an I, there's an A in it. I went and looked it up just so that I wouldn't look any more of a fool than I am. Uh, that I've already looked anyway, so um, or sounded. So at this point, um, the, the the pivot hole for the contrate wheel is right here, and I'm going to zoom in on this. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera or not, but I was able to um, observe something. I'll move things over. Get this observe something and maybe I can turn it just right so we can see it in the light. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. Um, so you'll notice, okay, here's the pivot hole of the contrate wheel and and this is the pinion that it interacts with. You'll notice about right here there is a line in the pinion and that is comes from um, the, the meshing of the the gear with this pinion. So that uh, using a, here again uh, a very rough and uh, coarse estimating method that we're gonna we're gonna get a, a measurement from the center of the pivot hole to up about where that line is using a vernier calipers and that's gonna give us the radius of what the wheel should be and um, take that double it and then we got we got the diameter of the wheel that we need to cut and then uh, it's a matter of uh, the math that I did earlier figuring out and guessing uh, doing an educated guess um, figuring out how many teeth should be in that gear so that is uh, I'll take those measurements and uh, maybe in the next portion of the video I'll show you as I cut out the wheel blank uh, or maybe not, who knows what. Um, but at this point, we can proceed on.